If this low keynote were a musical, its overture would be my first memory of listening to an overture. I was in first grade at my local high school's production of Rodgers and Hammerstein's Cinderella. I sat on my knees on an old folding chair in a dusty gym temporarily converted into auditorium. I craned my neck to watch the pianist play every line of that overture, trying to commit it to memory. I was hooked. When the fluorescent lights of that gym flickered off and the overture started, it was like a religious experience. When I went to see a show, I never sat back and relaxed. For me, theater always meant leaning in. And as I've gotten older, I find myself not only leaning in, but also looking around to see what the rest of the audience is thinking. At a Broadway show a couple years ago, I remember looking over the balcony and seeing two audience members who had entered the theater appearing to be strangers reach across the aisle to comfort each other after a particularly tear-filled musical number. These memories of being in a theater are the overture to this low keynote because it's moments like this that have made me see theater as a way to develop empathy. If you're interested in becoming an empathetic leader, and I suspect many of us here at the GSB are, I invite you to see the stage as a tool for developing yourself and your communities. So from this stage today, we'll explore first, the function of the arts and theater especially, and second, what the industry and all of us can do to democratize access to theater. Let's start with function. I see theater as a sort of cheat code for developing empathy. The best theater asks its audience members to lean in and take an imaginative leap into new stories and new characters. And that happens with an audience around us. You may enter the theater as an individual, but once you're there, you become part of an audience that laughs together, that holds its breath together. You become part of a living collective response. Theater is one of the only communal experiences we have with a group that we haven't filtered out ahead of time. The results can be fantastic and even physiological, as evidenced by research done by neuroscientists at University College London. They discovered that watching theater can synchronize the heartbeats of an audience. It's an experience so extraordinary that it can overcome group differences. In just a couple of hours, theater can work double time to not only entertain, but to connect. That's an experience everyone should have access to. But unfortunately, the theater industry can feel inaccessible, if not exclusive and elitist to many. One of its challenges is geographic. Theater can be tough to get to. Much of theater's creative capital remains locked up in a small radius in a few blocks in Manhattan. That's a world that felt a million miles away from where I grew up in a small town in rural Nebraska. Back home, I was thankful for that occasional local production, and I savored any YouTube bootleg video of theater that I could get my hands on. Another challenge is financial. Theater tickets can be prohibitively expensive. This is a challenge I saw firsthand while working with a Broadway theater producer. There, I saw how high ticket prices needed to be to even give the show a chance at breaking even each week. But beyond geographic and financial challenges, there are perceived barriers to access. Some wonder whether they even belong in theaters that may not have represented or welcomed them before. All of these were challenges to theater before pandemic brought the industry to its knees. Yes, this is an inflection point for theater, but it's not the end of theater. It's just an intermission. Like many areas in life, COVID has given us a chance to reassess and make some changes going forward. I, for one, am starting to get optimistic about where we're headed next. So for the second act of this low keynote, we'll look to the future to see what the industry and all of us can do to democratize access to theater. One of the keys is how theater will come back in a new conversation with technology. 
Now, here we have to address the elephant in the room. You and I are not in the same room together. I feel the tension of talking about my love of being in a theater together live while giving this talk to a camera alone recorded. One of the many reasons why I love theater is because it's an antidote to a life of screens. Look, I'm a sucker for a live experience, but I'm also excited about the ways that technology can amplify some parts of theater to make it more accessible. Technology can drive three shifts in distribution, development, and discovery of theater. On distribution, digitization has the potential to help theater reach wider audiences. Yes, even reach some kid in Nebraska. For all of you who devoured Hamilton from your couches this past summer, there's likely more theatrical content headed your way. Producers appear to be shedding the old conventional wisdom that putting theater on screen cannibalizes demand. Instead, they're recognizing that while being inside of a theater is not the same thing as watching what's happening inside of a theater, the recorded version can increase viewership and can generate demand for the live experience. Additionally, theater will continue to explore ways to use technology to not just share but enhance its storytelling. From AR, VR, emerging audio platforms, and other innovations, theater makers will find ways to capture some of the sparks of live theater in new formats. Distribution is changing, and so is development. The development process of a big show from idea to opening is a long and winding road. It can be a multi-year journey from labs, readings, workshops, regional productions, festivals, and other stops. But digitizing some of the steps of the development process can help theater makers develop their shows more quickly and more affordably and reach less insular audiences along the way. There's also a benefit to the cross-pollinization of theatrical development. Putting exciting and diverse local theater on screen makes it more accessible and allows it to influence more theater makers around the world. Finally, there's a shift in how we discover theater. A combination of improved technology and a global pandemic has propelled theater to pop up in more places and platforms than ever before, including a crowdsourced TikTok musical. It's an eye-opening reminder that theater isn't tied to a building. That can help us discover new theatrical voices, sidestepping some of the gatekeepers that have traditionally guarded the industry. From distribution to development to discovery, technology has the potential to amplify live arts. And theater is an industry with creativity coursing through its veins, so I know this is just the start. That's what the industry can do to democratize access to theater I'll end with what all of us can do. Appreciate the function of the arts and champion its importance in your communities. That can mean seeing more theater each year in any format and supporting your local artistic organizations. Consider the social return on your investment in artistic organizations. And once you leave Stanford and become leaders in your own communities, see the stage as a way to develop yourself and those communities. From this stage today, we explored the function of theater and what all of us can do to democratize access to it. And while many stages around the world remain dark right now, I'm betting that theater's next act will be its greatest one yet. Mm -hmm.